The three things that the Warramai always wanted out of the agreement were recognition of ownership, and, and that's been achieved. The land is now owned by the Warramai people. It was the uh, employment and training opportunities, and you know, we now have 16 new Aboriginal people working on the land, working in the landscape, um, looking after country and, and talking to the community. And they also wanted economic opportunities as well, so there's um, opportunities now for their ongoing involvement in commercial business, um, working with the commercial operators, working with the tour guides, uh, contracting opportunities in the future. And the last thing they wanted to see was that the whole community had ongoing access to the land, so the creation of the park, um, the opportunity to now write a plan of management and write those recreational users into the future is, was an, also an important part of the process. It's been a great opportunity to, to take Aboriginal people out of the local community, bring them into work on country and give them an opportunity to have a say in the future of this land. I see it as part of reconciliation on the wider scale. The whole issue was from day one was to have that land protected because of the cultural significance and open it up to the wider public. We don't want to lock it all up for, for ourselves, we want to educate and spread the word about the Aboriginal culture here in Australia. The only way we could do this was to have this co-manage agreement. The Land Council itself, we, we didn't have the resources or the infrastructure to manage an area like that, so I think it's good that sort of the national park systems come aside as a, a brother, as to speak, to sort of support the Land Council through that process and preserve and protect them Aboriginal sites up in there. The best thing I see about it is the employment and training for our people, empower them, give them give them the skills so they can get out there and only best spot to be working on your own lands and getting paid for it. Under the park system I think it's it's unreal. To see them there in their uniforms, their chests are out and they're proud as proud can be. I think what's unique about the Warramai co-management agreement is that it really was the Warramai community's desire to create it. Most other co-managed parks were a national park first and they went through the process of being handed back. In this case it was the Aboriginal community that came to government and said, you know, we'd like to make a park out of land which we think is rightfully ours. So it's really unique in that it's been driven from the Aboriginal community up. They've really said, here's a special piece of our country but we want to share it with the community more generally. We want it to be a national park. We want to be involved in owning it and managing it but we want to share it with the community at large. The challenge is going forward is really ensuring that all the different people that want to use the bike can use it um, fairly and without damaging the important natural and cultural values that, that are there. Um, you know, we have horse riders, we have four-wheel drive riders, we have quad bike riders, we've got film companies. Everyone wants a little piece of the bike and it's really up to the Aboriginal community and the Park Service to come up with a plan that shares that around in a way that it's all still there for us to visit in the future. Yeah, look, the challenge is to let people enjoy the landscape and make sure our grandchildren and their grandchildren can experience the same thing that we can today and that's about ensuring we don't damage the Aboriginal sites in the land, about looking after country. Um, that's the key message the Aboriginal community want to carry forward. They want this natural landscape available for everyone forever uh, and that's our challenge is to manage it for that. I believe the biggest issue is going to be for the management of the land is to find that happy medium between the local Aboriginal people the wider community and the tourist uh, operators that come and use our, our lands up there at Stockton. We want to actually have Aboriginal people running tours, empower them, give them, give them the skills and get them out there and, and pass the word on it and protect our, our sites.